I'd like to introduce Hiccup, a pipeline developed here at the Babram Institute for analysing high C data. So what is high C? Well, high C is a new technique for deducing the three-dimensional structure of a genome. It basically entails cross-linking the DNA protein and then digesting with a restriction enzyme. Although this will cut the uh, DNA into smaller fragments, the basic three-dimensional architecture is maintained by the DNA protein crosslinks that were introduced during the fixation step. These protein DNA crosslinks are then further shortened by a sonication step. These fragments, sent for paired end sequencing, are termed die tags. And in theory, the forward read should represent the sequence from one restriction fragment, and the reverse read should represent the sequence from another restriction fragment. So how does Hiccup work? Well, essentially, Hiccup is a series of Perl scripts which perform different tasks in analysing the high C data. So from the sequencer, after performing paired end sequencing, you should have two FASTQ files one for the forward read and one for the reverse read. The first step is the truncation step performed by Hiccup Truncator. This looks within each of the forward and reverse reads to identify the high C ligation junction sequence which I will discuss shortly. If this is encountered the read is truncated at this point. The next step after truncation is mapping which is performed by another script called Hiccup Mapper. This is essentially a wrapper for Bowtie or Bowtie 2 and maps the reads independently to a selected Bowtie reference genome. Independent mapping is important because this is high C and unlike other paired end sequencing protocols one cannot assume that just because one read is at maps to one location of the genome the other read should be in close proximity. After mapping comes filtering. This script removes many of the commonly encountered high C artifacts which may skew or cause you to misinterpret your data in for subsequent analysis. I mentioned previously that there is a script within the Hiccup pipeline called Hiccup Truncator which truncates reads. I just wanted to explain briefly the rationale for this. A high C die tag is not a contiguous stretch of DNA, but is the result of a ligation event between two different restriction fragments, maybe from completely different regions of the genome. Consequently, such DNA species cannot be aligned using conventional mapping techniques. Mapping each read independently should, in most cases, overcome this problem. This is because the high C die tag is usually much longer than the sequencing reads that are performed. This means that the, the reads are generally only at the ends of each fragment, and one read does not cross from one restriction fragment into the next. However, there is nothing stopping this happening, and we might expect this would result in a read, a hybrid read essentially, not mapping back to the reference genome. However, we can ameliorate this situation by looking for a high C ligation junction sequence. This high C ligation junction is not found in the reference genome, but is a result, a direct result, of the high C protocol. By looking for this known sequence, and if it is encountered truncating the read at this point, it is possible to improve mapping efficiency. So after the mapping is performed, a filtering step is performed to remove the commonly encountered high C artifacts. If you just look at the top diagram, this shows schematically the high C process, where we have a cross-linked genome, it's digested, and then there is a ligation uh, step where we re-ligate the previously digested restriction fragments. Now at the bottom what you can see is the canonical high C die tag where we have a ligation event between two spatially separated restriction fragments, i.e. they're not contiguous to one another on the genome. However, that's not the only thing we will observe. For example, 
Despite our best efforts, a single restriction fragment may ligate to itself, or we may see two neighbouring restriction fragments re-ligating together, or indeed they may never have been uh, digested in the first place. And if you look at the diagram below you will see other types of artefacts we often observe. For example we may see something called uh, dangling ends. This is where the forward and reverse read map to the same restriction fragments and one or both of the reads overlap the restriction fragment cut site. Another type of species we may observe is where both reads will map to the same restriction fragment but neither end overlaps the restriction fragment cut site. Another possibility is that we have a contiguous stretch of DNA that encompasses more than two restriction fragments. This is usually quite rare because such fragments would tend to be very large and fall foul of the high C protocol size selection step. During the high C protocol, the size of the fragment sent for sequencing is determined using a bioanalyzer. Hiccup will look to see where reads align on the reference genome. This will allow us to bioinformatically deduce the size of the die tag. However, if this predicted size does not correspond with what we see on the bioanalyzer, we may presume that this is just some sort of artifact or problem. For example, a mismapping event could cause a read to align to a position in the middle of a very large restriction fragment. And this is a region of the genome we would not expect to be visible to the high c protocol. So essentially Hiccup looks for all these different classes of artifacts and removes them. It also provides statistics on the numbers of each type of artifact encountered, which would help you with your QC and help refine future experimental protocols. As mentioned previously, after the filtering step, there is a deduplication step to remove putative PCR duplicates. After that, the output from Hiccup may be used by your favourite analysis pipeline. So how do I get hold of Hiccup? Well, Hiccup is available from the Babram Bioinformatics website at the link shown.